Hey, hey friend, it's MJ Gordon. So today I'm going to be answering your questions from my adrenal fatigue diet video. So you guys had a ton of good questions and I think it is really important to elaborate. Of course, as always, I state that I'm sharing what helped me with my adrenal fatigue, but just because we have similar symptoms doesn't mean that you have adrenal fatigue. So as I always say, always, always get checked, get tested, talk to different healthcare professionals that are quality healthcare professionals that you trust, get different opinions, different perspectives, but first and foremost, know exactly what's going on in your body and understand why you're feeling or experiencing the symptoms that you do. And so a lot of people in the comments have mentioned different things like kidneys disease, Addison's disease, where a lot of these things that I share with you may not help. In fact, it might even worsen the issue. So you really have to make sure that you have adrenal fatigue based on low cortisol. And I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue by multiple doctors and I had multiple tests that were 100% in congruence with where my cortisol levels were at. So that is first and foremost, so important. Now I've collected a ton of questions. We have a lot to go through and I have this in no order specifically, but I wanna try to get through as many as possible. So hopefully you guys get your questions answered. So the first question is from Benjamin. He believes he's having high cortisol issues. He wants to fix his issues with diet. Uh, strict diet, I was following, um, but he's afraid of doctors. Bit stressed dealing with this. Began losing muscle while stressed. And he wants to fix things, fix things up proper and not just patch them up. Benjamin, I'm gonna reiterate myself, you really have to get tested. Um, try not to be afraid of doctors. Doctors are medical professionals for a reason. They go through several years of research and this is a benefit, but sometimes not helpful because a lot of them might only be specialized in one opinion or one specific perspective or approach. So that's why you always hear me say, check with multiple doctors, do your own research, put the pieces together so that you have a very congruent understanding. But if you wanna avoid going around in circles and feeling lost about the situation, then you have to avoid the guesswork of shooting in the dark and just saying, hey, we have similar issues, like maybe this will work for me, that could do more damage than good. And if there's one thing that I wish I would have done very early on was to just work hand in hand with professionals and always stay up to date with my tests and awareness of what was going on in my body. So make sure you get yourself checked out so you know what's going on and how to address it. Brannigan Fransworth, how long before you noticed changes for the better in your blood sugars? And how long were you eating like this before you noticed you could go longer without eating? So I'm going to place the adrenal fatigue diet video in the link below so you guys can reference back to what these people are asking about. But to answer your question, Brandigan, I noticed changes right away. When your blood sugar tanks and you're not supporting your blood sugars, it feels horrible right away. So the minute that I started supporting my blood sugars, I felt really good and I would feel good for a day or two and if I would forget or just start spacing out my meals too much or not have like the completely balanced meals, then I would start feeling exhausted and emotional and all those swings would start coming back pretty quickly. So I had to eat as frequently as I stated I did like every half an hour to an hour for probably about a month or two. But there's also this balance multiple balances really that come into play. And one of the balances that come into play is how much output, like this is a formula we talk about all the time in my Level Up program, which is a program that is based on all this, but it's more for increasing energy and improving your energy overall. Even though I disclose so many recipes and all the things that we talk about here, I cannot tell you how to recover from adrenal fatigue because I haven't diagnosed you, I'm not a doctor, so that's why I keep reiterating that. But just in general, I was able to support my blood sugars to get back to working out within two months of eating like this. And what I notice even now is if I increase the amount of activity or workload or stress that I impose on myself, then the amount of support that I have to give my body has to be more. So for example, right now I exercise or I move my body probably once every day to every other day. And I say exercise or move because if I'm doing something like gardening and shoveling, then more than likely I'm not gonna be able to work out 
the same day unless I have a significant amount of time to recover the day after or I have a lot of food or a lot of time to prep, like meal prep, and make sure that I eat more frequently for recovery thereafter. So there is a balance that comes into play, but when I kept everything the same and then by the time I started working out, it was about one month when I started spacing it out instead of every half hour to 45 minutes, it was probably every hour to hour and a half or so. And then when I started working out again, then I was eating like every hour for a little bit until my body started to recuperate those energies. So Sharon Empson says she has adrenal fatigue and experiences what I say listening to her body right now after five years she's able to go on walks having to find the place where i don't push my body beyond what can handle the crash is horrible and i'm blessed to have a great naturopathic doctor who helped me thank you for sharing sharon from california thank you for sharing uh, sharon because this is a perfect example of how somebody took the time to do their own research uh, just to confirm their situation validate their approach as well as have a a professional that seems like she it says great naturopathic doctor who she likes trusts, who seems to have a good history and record and be able to find a place where she can start to feel empowered in order to address her issues address her symptoms and figure out what she needs in order to recover her body and I really love that you talked about Sharon how to go on walks and not push your body because so many of you guys want to do so much and I really relate to this. That's why I came out sharing this because a lot of people look at me from the outside and say, you seem to have it all. You seem to have the business, the family, the lifestyle, you do yoga, you do fitness, like you seem active, like what's the issue? Well, the issue is ever since I was younger, I was a high performance person, high performance athlete. I've been a business owner and entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. and having that high performance put sort of like my level of expectation of myself all the way up here that i should be performing at this level at all times that i should be fit at all times and it was in keeping that expectation of ideals even ideals of my own diet and what i should be eating and what's healthy and based on my research what science proves this whole entire process was so humbling and saying hey like you have to sort of let go of your ideals and really just like get down to the present moment of what's going on and what you need to do to fix it. Even if it means you're not exercising as much as you think you should or as hard as you think you should or you don't look as fit as you're used to looking in the mirror or you're not eating like what you think is the most holistic, healthy, loving, perfect diet that everybody should be eating. So um, yeah, it's really important to like get in line with listening to where you're at in this moment um, and kind of let go of those ideals or pressuring yourself or putting these high expectations on yourself. So Hope Griffin says she's sensitive to egg white protein, limits dairy as much as possible, small amounts of grass-fed butter, organic cheese, preferably goats or sheep's milk. Is there another slow release protein that would be good to eat before bed? I personally don't know of one. I know that they have isolated whey or isolated casein, which is technically still dairy, but supposedly doesn't have effects if you're lactose intolerant or if you have dairy sensitivity. But of course, always check with your doctor. If you're eating um, like goat or sheep milk, that should work just as fine as well. Um, I don't think it necessarily has to be eggs or dairy. Like even if you eat like a little meal before that's just whole, I know for myself, like if I'm at the end of the night, I have to check in with my body and say, okay, like how hungry am I? Am I going to feel hungry in a few hours? Assuming I'm staying awake, even though I'm not staying awake, like you can ask yourself, how hungry do I think I'll be like three hours from now? And if I feel like, oh, I'm gonna get hungry pretty soon, then I make sure I eat just right before I go to bed. So even now I'm no longer doing like egg white protein or casein protein before bed every night. I just make sure that I'm well fed. So hopefully that helps. But if you do find different options, let us know, share with me because I don't personally know of any. Holly Dar Darty, sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't like butchering names, but Holly asks, um, adrenal fatigue, oh, she states, uh, is not diagnosed by real doctors because it is not real. As someone working with adrenal glands, AKA Addison's disease, you sound like a complete idiot. Well, thank you, Holly, for that input. I'm not sure how much 
value we get out of that. You know, if you if you do work with Addison's disease, we would love to hear more because obviously a lot of us are experiencing these symptoms. I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue by real doctors who have medical degrees, have been licensed and have been practicing for years. So not quite sure what you're going on about there, but if you have some value that you would like to share, uh, from your experience working with Addison's disease, we are all ears. We are all here trying to feel better about ourselves and trying to do what we can to improve our health and our well being. And that's what I'm here trying to share with everybody as well. Anna Machalska, I'm so sorry again. Anna M says, were I, was I mixing protein with veggies and carbs in my diet reference? I saw you shouldn't do that. And I actually got a really good question along these same lines from somebody on Facebook who asked that I say I don't do fats, but yet my diet is full of fats. And I talk about pH balance, but my diet seems to mix things. And I think this is a really good question or clarification, both from Anna and the person on Facebook. Um, but I wanna clarify one thing. First and foremost, I say I don't do oils, but healthy fats and proteins were essential to this diet. That's what my whole bowls are about. They are a complex grain or a resistant starch carbohydrate mixed with a plant veggie base and some healthy fats and proteins. This was super, super huge for my own recovery. But when it comes to pH, this is really important too, because yes, when you mix any type of foods, even alkaline foods, they have a tendency to produce some mild acidity. Like you're probably not going to get a super, super purely alkaline diet unless you're eating fresh, raw mono meals all the time, which for a lot of us is likely not going to happen. So I don't want you to think that an acidic combo, like mildly acid forming or more neutral is a bad thing because our bodies run slightly acidic. What we want to avoid is imposing excess acidity or making our body out of balance on that pH scale because it adds more stress and that acidity also increases inflammation and causes more issues and illness and brain fog and exhaustion, etc. But a lot of us tend to eat more acidic to begin with. So by simply removing the caffeine, which is a huge one that I know is not on this list, but remove all caffeine stimulants, et cetera, um, as well as coming down to more of this neutral bland diet will actually help improve your acidity levels despite the fact that it is mildly acid forming. Now, something I also did was incorporate a lot of fresh lemon water in between those meals, as well as fresh veggies like celery and carrots in between those meals as well. Now, when you come out of that like having to support your blood sugar. And that for me is not like something that I can tell you when or what, you have to listen to your body. And there's a lot of times where in my process, I crashed just because I tried and I pushed it a little too far. Like I tried to go a little bit long without food, ate the food too late, or didn't eat enough food after I worked out and then had a big crash afterwards and it happens. You have to learn where you're at. But the idea isn't about eating this diet forever. What I had to do was eat this diet until I was supported, until I felt like I could recover. And as I started loading more stress or more energetic things into my lifestyle and could recover from that without hitting a crash, I could also start incorporating other types of stress, like more fruit or more sugar into my diet or spacing the meals out uh, further and further apart until I was eating just a regular, like three meals a day and you know some snacks in between. So I know it's not as clear, but what I stated in my adrenal fatigue diet video, those were very like strict rules and very just black and white for the longest time until I started feeling like I was recovered. And then I would always try like one adjustment and see how it goes like for the week. So if my adjustment is instead of eating uh, zero fruits and sugars, I'm going to add green apples or a handful of berries because that's what my hormone therapist said I could eat. And I add an apple one day and then I'll wait the next day, see how it feels. Oh, it felt good the other day and I'll add an apple again and then wait and, and so do that two to three times in a week before like next week I might try berries or next week I might, instead of adding a food, uh, increase the amount of time in between. So once you start being able to incorporate more of those like fresh 
fruits in the diet, it becomes a lot easier to maintain the pH balance, but drinking alkaline water, fresh lemon water, and incorporating like fresh raw veggies in between those meals as like those bite snacks were really good. And not all my meals had to be this mix, like probably for the first couple weeks it did, but like eventually I could like swap out one meal. Like if, it, if I was eating every half an hour, I could swap out one for just like a fresh handful of carrots or celery or something like that. And that makes it super alkaline. So I know that's like super in depth over explaining, but hopefully that really clarifies the perspective of what, you know, I'm trying to say with my diet and, and why it seems a little bit confusing. Shell says, uh, could you make a video where you share some bland recipes? I would be so thrilled. I share a couple meal prep videos. I will stick it in the link below um, where I meal prep and show you how to prep the meals. Um, specific recipes and stuff we go into in the Level Up program, they're really all the same. Like if you just look at those meal prep videos and you just swap it out with the complex carbs that you want and the fats and proteins that you want, you can make all kinds of different meals with that. So you can check that out in the link below. But if you want specific recipes, we do like cooking stuff in the Level Up program. Miranda Miller says, if you have kidneys disease, highly, highly, highly recommend getting the kidney function test. It's only 30 to $40. Um, she put kidney.org here. And high protein will send you into dialysis. So this is what we were talking about in the beginning. And I put it here just to reiterate that if you have kidneys disease, according to Miranda, I've not done my research on kidneys disease, but according to her, she says that limiting animal protein is very key and important. That's why I'm going to reiterate again that it's so key and important that you get tested and know exactly why your symptoms are the way that they are. It's really, really important. So Robin, Robin Elliott says she's confused about the fruit, no fruit except one green apple or uh, fruits or berries, but then later you say eat whole fruits, fruits clarify. And I think we just clarified that two questions ago. So in the beginning, um, zero sugar, zero fruits. For me, according to my hormone therapist, I was technically allowed an apple or a handful of berries, but you know, because I'm OCD, not for real OCD, but because I like to think I'm an overachiever, I just didn't want to touch it. I just, I wanted to like go above and beyond. Um, but eventually you can start incorporating fruits back uh, as you feel like your body can support it without dipping in blood sugars, without crashing. So Erica says, what stage of adrenal fatigue did I had? I was on borderline level three or four. Technically, I was an extreme level three adrenal fatigue. And the reason for this was because my cortisol levels were not completely flatline 24 seven. If you were to look at it on a chart, I actually woke up with healthy cortisol levels within two to three hours, went down to a very extreme low flatline for the rest of the day. And around nine to 10 PM, there was like a little blip on the screen. So like my, cause you naturally have like a burst of cortisol right around that time in the evening. So it looked like my body was trying to kickstart itself, so to speak. It was my hormone therapist who said, you know, we can try to go about this naturally because it looks like your body is trying. And so fortunately for me, I wasn't at a total flat line. Um, According to her and her opinion, she if I was a total flatline, she wouldn't recommend trying to do it naturally. So again, another reason why you should get tested so you know exactly where you're at and what kind of support you need. Melissa Ramos Ramos says, thanks for sharing your story, being transparent. Um, okay, Melissa Ramos, hi, thank you. Melissa Ramos is a nutritionist, I believe, a naturopathic dietitian. Um, you're some kind of professional, but I wanted to stick you in here because I just wanted to not only reach out and say, hey, if you wanted to come and chat with all these viewers here, would love to learn more about your perspective and the things you have to share. Um, she said with her patients, adrenal fatigue is a huge place to start with these kind of symptoms. Otherwise, thyroid, progesterone loss, gut dysfunction, um, heal your adrenals. I love this because it just shows, it's, it goes hand in hand with everything that I say you need to test. You need to test your hormone levels. You need to test your gut health. You need to test your thyroid. Also on top of that, I recommend your food sensitivities and allergies. So Melissa, hi, what's up? You guys check her out. Um, I guess, I guess I have to find your link. So, um, I'll stick it in the link below and hopefully you see this cause I would love to chat. Smooth Duck says, how do you know you cured adrenal fatigue? Here's the truth. Until I get tested again, 
I won't know exactly if I healed adrenal fatigue or if I've just recovered from those lower levels or stages of my symptoms. Obviously, my adrenals are working, they're balanced, they're being supported, like I feel like a normal person. Um, I don't have adrenal crashes really anymore. What I do have or experience currently is like hypoglycemia um, symptoms if I work out too hard and don't support my blood sugars or I don't eat a balanced diet for like days. But it takes like a week or two before I start feeling those um, where I start, I have a tendency to not eat lots of grain. Before all this, I used to be on a really like lean diet. So lots of veggies um, and lots of meats like before, before, like way before, before I was a vegan, before all that. And um, so I don't know if that is like what caused my body or just made it worse. Um, um, wanting all this grain or all that support because obviously you need sugars so super lean isn't necessarily always good but in order to know if you cured adrenals you would have to test the functions of your adrenals and make sure they're functioning at tip-top shape so Sarah Thatcher says what portion size did I eat every 30 to 40 minutes would I say a half a cup or less or more I think when I first started, um, I would eat a bowl, I would make a bowl, and my first sitting, I would probably eat half that bowl. And then it would probably take like two to three hours to finish the other half. And when I say a bowl, like, I don't know, like a regular size cereal bowl, but like a little bit deeper, like a soup bowl. Um, so every 30 to 40 minutes, sometimes it would just be like, three or four scoopfuls that I would shovel in my mouth. So yeah, it would probably be about a half a cup um, to one cup of my bowl every 30 to 40 minutes. And I'm just guessing, like, I don't know. I didn't measure it. I just ate until I was satiated, waited 30 to four minutes. I could just feel like my energy either tank. I could start to feel it because as you go through this process, you develop such a huge mind body awareness. Like even today, right now, we had this amazing dinner and it seems like a healthy dinner, but I didn't look at the ingredients. Like my husband just cooked it and I ate it and I was laying in bed after dinner and I said to him, I can feel that dinner has so much sugar. Like I could feel it in my veins. I could feel my heart beating, the way that my heart beats. I could feel the way that my head felt like just kind of heavy, like sort of that hypoglycemic type, but not in a way where I was like dysfunctional, but you, you just develop this, this sensitivity to what your body needs. So over time, at first it was like, okay, every 30 to 40 minutes, just eat. And like, if I didn't feel like eating, I would just take a couple spoonfuls. But eventually my body started to learn, hey, I need this, I use this and I want this. And so I just eat what I want to eat. And because the diet is like a non-addictive diet, it's not loaded with salts or sugars or oils or tons of seasoning, um, it, you don't overeat this stuff. Like you just, you, you wanna eat what you need and more than anything, you eat because you want that energy and the support, not because you're necessarily hungry. Amanda Satterthwaite says, She's finding breakfast challenging. Oats hold her for an hour, but something heavier like buckwheat toast plus protein often makes her feel too heavy. What did I have for breakfast? Unfortunately, I can't have eggs. What protein powder did I use? And did I use snacks only for snacks or for breakfast? Um, if buckwheat toast and protein powder make you feel too full and oats only hold you for an hour, have you ever tried mixing oats with the protein powder? Um, I, personally, in the beginning, I tried to stay away from like toast or pasta or like any kind of processed grain and just try to stick to whole grain. Um, so if that makes you feel full but it's too heavy, maybe don't eat as much or just take a couple bites and then wait for 30 to 60 minutes and take a couple bites again. That's like my go-to because I'm the same way. I can't sit and eat like this huge meal. For my protein powder, there's a whole list of proteins I use. I'll stick that in the link below as well. Um, right now I stick to mainly Garden of Life, Orgain, or Vega. And here, you're probably gonna think this is really gross, but I drank this because it was so supportive. Unsweetened almond milk has the healthy fats or unsweetened coconut milk. And, but normally I just go to almond milk, it just feels better. It's just that body awareness thing again. I just go with what feels better. Um, and then I used my protein powder 
the regular two scoops or whatever the full serving size is, and I would actually blend brown rice into it as well. So it kind of is like this weird horchata mix. <laughs> and a lot of these protein powders are, you know, like stevia leaf or like sugar alcohol, so it's not spiking the blood sugar, but it's still got that kind of sweetness to it. And that really was just something that I carried around with me all the time. And I, reflecting back on the videos for adrenal fatigue, I don't know why I forgot about this because aside from my bowls, these protein shakes were like everything to me. It was the quickest, fastest thing that I could stick in the blender and just have this fully like supportive thing. But that was at the very, very beginning what I used for breakfast and snacks in between my bowl meals. So I love that because it was a little bit heavy, but not too heavy and I didn't have to chew. So it's like if you're eating every 30 to 60 minutes, you get over chewing so much. Clarissa Lucas says, what was in my bowl specifically? What did I mix with my egg white protein shake? Avocado is fat. I thought you said exclude fats. And did I have brain fog? So here's this question with the fats again, exclude oils processed refined oils but even dr berg would disagree with me he's a huge proponent for cold pressed olive oil so that's just my thing i don't like oils i think they're too fat i think they clog everything they slow everything down so i'm not a big fan of oils that was just what i did um for my egg white protein all my protein shakes all my bl like smoothie blends or like mixes my shakes i'll call them shakes because smoothies usually implies fruit but all my shake mixes that i did always had a base of almond milk unsweetened and then did i have brain fog yes Yes, huge brain fog uh, with, with the crashes, with the adrenal fatigue. And then uh, what was in my bowl specifically? It was a whole blend specifically. Um, again, usually always a base of rice, quinoa, uh, barley, oats, uh, wild rice, but usually rice is like my go-to. It's a whole, not white rice. Make sure it's not white rice. And then veggies. So my go-to is usually sauteed spinach, or steamed broccoli. Those are like my two major go-tos. But then I also like the rainbow colors. So sauteing squash, like yellow squash, green squash, carrots, onions, um, eggplants, and you can, or like even a red lettuce. Is that red lettuce? Cabbage, I'm sorry, red cabbage. And bl like blend those all together. You can saute them in uh, chicken broth or you can just saute them in water. I prefer sauteing them in vegetable or chicken broth. Gives it a little bit of that extra flavor. You don't have to cook things in oils, even if you're sauteing. Water saute, boil. I don't like boil as much because it leaches the stuff, but anyways, saute all those veggies. Put them on top of a bed of rice. Like this is 70%, 70 to 80% of the meal. And then you can top it off with fish or eggs or if it is sauteed in like chicken stock or bone broth or a, um, a chicken uh, broth, then I am less inclined to add more meats into the bowl. So that's the bowl, but sometimes I would get tired of the bowl and I would do soups, but it would be the same thing. You would have veggie or bone broth and it would be tons of rice, tons of quinoa, tons of veggies, and just little chunks of chicken or whatever you decide to put in there. So it's very, very simple. MV Smith says, how often did you work out? What type of workouts did you do? Um, I've gained in my stomach and thighs and butt. So MB, I'm gonna say first and foremost, like when it, for me, when it came to healing uh, or recovering from my symptoms, I had to throw all ideals out the window. Like if I had to gain 20 pounds or 50 pounds to get back, which, you know, I didn't think that was gonna happen, but I was just not concerned with the way I look anymore. And even still to this day, when I start getting concerned about the way that I look, um, I start making poor choices that don't prioritize my health. So this is what health looks like for me. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I am small boned and I'm generally petite, uh, so I don't, and I say fortunate, but like, honestly, that voluptuous look is just gorgeous to me. Like I love how the curves are coming back in and, and all that. So I, I don't even know why I say I'm fortunate. I think that's just, you know, social programming really like everybody is beautiful. Um, and I think if you just focus on health, then your body will emerge in its own natural beauty. 
um, not to be too preachy about that. But um, for me working out, when I first started, I um, actually started MMA. That sounds crazy because MMA sounds like really intense, but I did like self-defense classes and I would opt out of the warm up. And yes, I looked like that lazy person who was just using this as some excuse to opt out of the warm up, but the warm up was like running and push ups and jumping jacks. So I couldn't do too much cardio. And I would do my own warm ups where I would gently skip or like fast walk and then do some stretching because I did a lot of yoga. So yoga was huge for me because it's very yin, it's very balancing. It's stress relieving, which reduces acidity, inflammation, and tension and everything that can just increase adrenal fatigue. And then um, I would do as much of the mixed martial arts that I can. And most of it is tactical stuff. So it didn't really involve lots of jumping or like high cardio. So that's where I started at first. And it only started with like once a week. And then it would be like twice a week. And then I would say, well, hey, I can start doing like slow squats or isometric holds, which would be just like a squat hold or like a wall sit. And then it would just build up from there. But as always, and this is something I reiterate in the Level Up program, is I always, always, always talk about whatever stress or workload you have, your recovery needs to be greater than that in order to come out of a deficit. In regular life, like your rest and recovery should be equal to support that. But if you are in a deficit, it should always be greater than that. And as your body grows in resilience and in its ability to support itself, then you can load more stress onto yourself. So it's just a slow progression, listening to your body, taking it easy, and always checking in with your healthcare professional to make sure that you're on the right track and you're not doing anything to compromise your issues. Stacy Kesey says, if you can't eat rice, what do you do? Um, do you eat a lot of raw since you say no oil, please help? If you can't eat rice, I've heard of this before. I'm not sure why you can't eat rice, but there's tons of different grains that you can eat. You can eat beans, you can eat lentils, you can eat starches. This is resistant starches were huge. For me, rice, I really thrived on that. I don't know if it's because of my culture. My culture is big rice eaters. I was born in that culture. Um, that's my genetic heritage. So I'm not sure if that's why I really thrive on rice, but technically speaking, quinoa should help barley, oats, um, lentils, beans, and even sweet potatoes. And I've mentioned in the past that I didn't do well on sweet potatoes. So try those things. Um, no oil, did I eat lots of raw? No, because I'll reiterate again, I mostly um, steamed or water sauteed or broth sauteed my stuff. You can bake without oils. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do cooking wise that don't require lots of oils. But the biggest reason that I didn't eat raw because eating raw did not have that blend that I needed. It, it digested too quickly for me to be able to support my blood sugars through the diet. So I, the only times I ate raw was like my in-between veggie snacks in between my meals. M. Caitlin 09 says, good fats coming from meat and animal products. Are you for real? Have you lost your mind? Please explain how, how saturated animal fat can be good in high quantities. Um, I never said eat saturated fat in high quantities. And I wanted to put this comment here because I wanna clarify that. I'm not saying go paleo or ketogenic, although Dr. Berg, I love Dr. Berg and the information he has to say, he's a ketogenic doctor. So Dr. Berg, if you see this, or if you wanna go over to Dr. Berg's page and comment and say, MJ Gordon sent me here, I would love to talk to Dr. Berg just to learn about his perspective and learn more from his approach because he obviously knows something about what he's talking about. But um, for myself, it was a 70 plus percent plant-based diet. I had to incorporate back animal fats and proteins because for some reason eating lots of nuts, nut butters, hummus, avocados, and lots of leafy greens, etc., did not seem to support my energy levels the same way. And this was like, one of the things that happened was when I discovered, okay, I'm gonna go back to incorporating animal products, incorporating animal protein. Um, that first week I felt amazing. And then I packed my lunch, not thinking for my yoga teacher training, which was all weekend. And I went to yoga teacher training and have no access to animal products because I just 
packed the way I would normally pack, which was with avocados and hummus and like grain crackers and all this stuff. And I just wasn't thinking. And then by the end of the week, I was totally had an adrenal crash. I was spent, I was toast. And I was like, what is it? And I was like, oh my gosh, like I totally forgot to pack that. So for me, it was very clear and evident that something in the animal fats and proteins were really supportive to my healing. And that's what I was talking about in my videos that I personally was not able to do it. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it's not possible. I just, I didn't find a solution there. So maybe I wasn't looking in the right places. Maybe didn't research hard enough or whatever argument everybody wants to make. But you know, I, I've been in the health and, and food industry for like over 10 years. It's, you know, I've been a personal trainer and, and all of that. So I didn't personally find any specific or clear pathway there and i tried and i tried and i tried for years and it wasn't doing it for me so um you know for the sake of my marriage for the sake of my health for the sake of me being a good mom and being able to support my business support my family because i'm the breadwinner of this family i had i had to do something drastic at that point that was going to give me the solutions i needed right away and so that's where i ended up um, and that's why we're here. So um, that that's it. And this is a fairly long video. We are, yes, fairly, fairly long video. So if you made it through all this, thank you so much. I'm happy that you're here and I'm happy you stuck through. It was good questions. There was a lot of really good questions there. And I know there was a lot of over explaining in some bits, but hopefully it gives you the clarity that you're looking for and that you need. Um, I feel so, humbled and honored to be able to share my journey here, hear about your journey, have you guys question my journey because it allows me to wanna to look into it further and understand this very fascinating subject. And something that, you know, personally for me, I want to be able to not only recover from my symptoms, but to really just be at my peak health possible. So. Um, in a way, you guys encourage me to continue to seek that and to not get complacent. And I mean, because once, once you heal from those really bad symptoms, um, it's really easy to feel like life is really good, but I still have questions. I'm still on my journey and I still wanna learn more. So I'm happy to be able to journey through that with you guys here. So I wanna thank you for supporting these videos, supporting the community, supporting one another, and most of all, just supporting me on my journey as well. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that this added tremendous value to you. And if you have any other questions or requests, stick them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, it's really helpful to me that you let me know by hitting thumbs up and hopefully you subscribe and stick around for more. So appreciate you guys being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Ciao for now.